reasons, in fact. And if that's agreed, here's four more reasons why. After the coronation, coronation for review. The king, with Princess Elizabeth and the Queen, arriving to go aboard the royal yacht, is welcomed by officers at Portsmouth, where the scene is set for one of the most imposing naval occasions in history. As His Majesty goes aboard, the royal salute of 21 guns is fired by nearly 100 warships, which are simultaneously dressed over all. The first combined tribute from the King's Navy, marking the commencement of the first review of his reign. In addition to the great concentration of British men of war, the most powerful ever assembled, there is nearly a score of foreign ships, the commanders of which are introduced to the King aboard the Victoria and Albert, that famous old vessel which may be performing almost her last royal service. And while the Queen, Sir Samuel Hoare, the First Lord of the Admiralty, and the Duke of Kent conversed during the presentations to His Majesty, the lively interest of the heiress to the throne is aroused by what must be for her a unique spectacle. To learn the identity of the ships and the answers to a dozen problems at once, the princess questions her cousin, Commander Lord Louis Mountbatten. A happy picture, this, and not to be forgotten. The first ceremony is over, the royal party steps forward towards the bridge, for now the review is to begin. As the Victoria and Albert gets underway and steams her course down the lines, eight miles long, in ship after ship the order is given, three cheers for His Majesty the King. Past British battle cruisers, aircraft carriers, cruisers and destroyers, the Royal Yacht proceeds until altering course, she returns towards her station. This time she passes the foreign warships. Almost all the navies of the world are represented. The German pocket battleship, Admiral Graf Spee, named after the German Admiral of great war fame. Russia is represented by the battleship Mara, with the curious funnel designed to keep fumes from the foretop. And second in the line is the Dunkirk, France's latest battleship, formidable in attack and most powerfully protected. And at the head of the line, the New York, one of the American battleships attached to the Grand Fleet in 1917. The King's inspection of the lines is complete. Now let us look down on some of the mightiest warships ever built, as aircraft of the fleet air arm fly past. The Nelson, flagship of the home fleet, heads the line, then the Rodney, both mounting 916 inch guns. Then Royal Oak, Ramillies, Resolution, and the line fades into the mist. So down another line, the famous Queen Elizabeth, extensively reconstructed since her war days. aircraft carrier Glorious. A mighty fleet even now renewing its strength. At night the fleet illuminations. Ships are picked out in lights twinkling from stem to stern. And searchlights weave intricate patterns across the sky and over the sea. Next day, His Majesty visits the ships. There's a bit of wind, and the Admiral's barge sends the spray flying as the King approaches the Nelson. On board, the Royal Admiral of the Fleet inspects the ship's company, and for His Majesty, the occasion must recall his own career in the service, which he entered as Prince Albert at the age of 13, later sailing in the Cumberland, Collingwood at the Battle of Jutland and the Malaya in 1970. As the King leaves, cheers ring out again. The most memorable naval review of our time is over. Let us echo the cheers of the fleet.